it's time for the ultimate showdown. We are going to compare in detail Gator Guards versus my DIY floating frame comic book displays. Which one is going to be better? And most importantly, which one displays your comic books the best? Hello everyone and welcome back to Married with Comics. I'm your host, Laura. Now, if you are not already subscribed to the channel, please do so. If you have not already been commenting and liking videos, please do so. Everything that you all are doing is definitely helping us grow and I love hearing your feedback. As a thank you, we always do special giveaways. Comment on a video, maybe get a giveaway, enjoy some great content. How can you lose? Quick update for you all is our beautiful custom made Married with Comics bookmarks have arrived. Now, I've been showing you the front side. I have not shown you the back intentionally because I wanted one additional little surprise and something special for you all to take home. So the front, of course, is the very obvious advertisement for what does the channel stand for? The back, on the other hand, is a combination in a beautiful repeating pattern because I can't help myself of our favorite writers, artists, characters, and titles. So if you want to get a quick snapshot of the things that we really enjoy, we're looking for, and some of the things that I know a lot of you all enjoy as well, take a look on the back. Something worth reading. So first things first, I have to give a huge thank you to Gator Guard. They are the ones that sent me two beautiful Gator Guards that we are going to show off and we're going to kind of go really in depth into in this video. But of course, without their support, this would not be possible. So thank you. And I can't wait to see what we end up with at the end of this video. Now, all of this started because I did a video about sort of your alternatives for displaying comic books, especially when you don't want to pay as much as getting all of your comic books slapped. I talked about Gator Guards and I talked about comic cloaks, and then I showed off my floating frames. You know, these. The big draw to the floating frames as opposed to a Gator Guard or a comic cloak was that you could display comics of varying sizes, such as The Last Ronin. The thing that was amazing about that video is when I finished it, posted it, Gator Guard was the one that responded. And they gave some great feedback about some of the things that are coming for their company. Now, at the time of my video, the only option that was available on the Gator Guard website were kind of a modern size standard comic book display choice. However, this November and December, they are going to start releasing a Silver Age and an annual size, which of course will display a thicker sized comic book. Eventually, they will have a comic book display that will fit The Last Ronin. It's just not going to come out right away. And the second thing that on the website, when you're choosing between a two pack or a five pack, you can only choose one color of screws. They did correct me and say that absolutely, it's correct that on the website that's your only option. However, if you send them an email and say that you want five different colors for your five pack, they will make sure to send you five different colors of screws. It's a really cool option. So with this video, the only thing I really wanted to change from kind of my original DIY option was the size. So these are 11 by 17 size floating frames. I did that because I wanted to make sure I could display the last Ronin. I did want to make sure that when I'm doing this video, that I'm comparing more apples and apples. So I made sure to get the smaller size floating frame, which is eight and a half by 11, which is definitely more of a standard size. But keep in mind when we're looking at this video, we are looking at costs. The only negative that I ran into is on my last video with the 11 by 17 size picture frames, my costs ended up being around $8 and 75 cents. It is possible because as soon as I released that video, all of my like new options on Amazon started disappearing. <laughs> so apparently someone out there is paying attention to these videos and snagging those. I was able to at least find a two pack, but my costs were a little bit higher. So this one ended up being around $11.50 per floating frame, as opposed to our Gator Guards, which if you get a two pack, it's around $21 each. And if you get a five pack, it's around $19.50 each. So there still is a cost savings, but not as significant as the first time I did this video. Now, the most important thing, of course, for me <laughs> is which comic books are we going to display? So for Gator Guard, we are going to display Daredevil 181 
Now, this, of course, is a key issue. It is the first time that Elektra died, and it is, of course, that very, very famous face-off between Elektra and Bullseye. I love this cover. However, some of you have already noticed it's a little rough. I know that it does need to be cleaned. It does need to be pressed. But that's also why I'm putting it in a gator guard, because then I can remove it very simply, get it cleaned up, and then put it right back in the exact same gator guard. The second one I'm going to display is a Neil Adams homage cover. So, of course, we all know that famous Batman Neil Adams cover that he did. Well, he homaged his own cover for the Joker, number one, and I absolutely love it. And who doesn't need a little bit more Batman and Joker in their lives? Now, for my DIY options, we are going to display X-Men 24. I love Rogue and Gambit. Love this cover. Was so excited when I found it over at Play for Life Comics. And the last one is Stray Dogs. So this is the only official variant cover that Stray Dogs has released, and it is homaging one of my favorite comic books two movies, The Crow. So I received two different Gator Guard sizes, one for Modern Age and one for Silver Age comics. You can, of course, see the logo for Gator Guard, and then a very nice note from Victor, who is the owner of the company. Now, in the background, you can see the Gator Guard logo. Gator Guard does have the option of customizing this logo in the background. You do see the word Gator Guard on the bottom, but you see that little circle on the right-hand side. The S, of course, lets you know that this is for the Silver Age size comic, and you will notice for the Modern Age comic, there is nothing in the circle. They sent me a variety of different colors of screws. So we have kind of a coppery gold, a purple, black, and then of course we have the guitar pick. So the cool thing about this is the owner, at least of the company, is based in Nashville. And he got the idea from the bass player for Lady Antebellum. He always includes kind of as a nod to Nashville, the guitar pick to help tighten the screws. So I decided to start with the Daredevil first. Just make sure that you're using the front half of the display case. You'll see the you know, square, so that way you can align your comic book to it. The only thing to make sure to do is to put your comic book in upside down so you are looking at the back of it when you're figuring out the spacing. There are, of course, two sides to the screws that you're going to attach to your gator guard. One side, of course, has the traditional screw front, and the other half looks like a, a circle. The circle side, you want to make sure that goes on the front, and then, of course, the screw side is going to go on the back. I found it easier to attach the screw faces to the front and then flip it over to the back and then start using my hands first to screw in the screws. The only thing I will say is it does take a little bit of touch to make sure that the screw is actually tightening properly and that the head of that screw went in properly into the plastic. You'll feel it when it starts snapping into place and when everything is aligned properly. When that's done, you can use your guitar pick to start tightening. The one thing that was really nice is even though I, I went in my normal diagonal pattern just to make sure that there was no shifting of the gator guard, I didn't have that problem. Everything stayed aligned properly. So even if you went in a simple, you know, counterclockwise or clockwise motion, it should not affect how well the gator guard aligns. As with everything, my second comic book went a lot faster now that I've figured out my learning curve. And of course, because it's the Joker, I'm definitely using my purple screws. So with this Gator Guard, I did have some issues with one of the screw faces that did not feel like popping into place properly. I tried it a couple different times and then finally I just went and did all three other ones and then went back to that one and it popped right into place. Honestly, all you have to do is fiddle with it a little bit. It will work. It's just a matter of making sure that everything is properly aligned with the plastic. This could have just been a, an absolute fluke. However, this only caused maybe a 30, 60 second delay compared to what happens when my DIY frames end up getting misaligned, which can definitely cause a five to 10 minute delay. I just wanted to give you a heads up in case you run into it, don't give up, keep trying. It will definitely pop into place. And I think it looks gorgeous. Now onto the DIY display. Some of you wonder why I made that workstation so kind of cramped. I wanted you to see the extent of the supplies that are necessary for our DIY comparison. Now, this I had some challenges with. If you notice, the DIY frame is a lot wider than I really was wanting, and you see how the Gator Guard is kind of fitted more to the comic book. 
it's a little bit more obvious than the 11 by 17, which floats a little bit more nicely in that frame. I will say that the floating frame plastic is a bit thinner than either my 11 by 17 or the Gator Guards. Now, the big thing about Stray Dogs, I showed you the back intentionally because there was a major printing error with this comic. So just make sure you'll see it's a severe discoloration on the black. Make sure to contact your LCS. This comic does naturally have a lot of waves. So of course, if you are getting this comic, you know, professionally slapped, make sure to get it pressed. In my last video, I didn't show you how many times I end up remeasuring and double checking just to make sure it is centered. So I wanted you to see just how extensive and a little obnoxious this can be, but you do end up getting it centered. It is possible. It just takes a lot of double checking. Just like before, we have our screws and there is kind of a back end to these screws that sticks out a little bit because you assume that it's going to float a little further away from the wall if you want to anchor it into the wall. There is a washer on both sides of the screw to avoid da possibly damaging or cracking the plastic. So with these, I like to put all four of my screw faces in and then attach them and continue that kind of X pattern just so that way you're avoiding a lot of the shifting of the plastic. I did notice with these, because the plastic is a little bit thinner, that I did have some more shifting of the plastic while I was tightening the screws than I did with my last DIY floating frame option. So this one went a little bit faster because I already had my measurements for that floating frame. And since it was the exact same size comic book, it was a lot simpler. However, I did notice that even though it's the same size, the cover on this has shifted just a little bit. So I did the best that I could, made sure it was centered, but you will notice it's just a little bit off by a millimeter. So this time I tried putting in the face screws and then flipping it over so that way I could tighten it on the back. If you flip it over to the back, it is technically a little bit easier to align the screws and make sure that they're going in straight. It's up to you and your personal preference. Now, just as before, you want to use your clamps, clamp all four sides, and then hot glue the sides. And this is to make sure that no air, um, dirt, or debris gets into the edges of the comic book and causes aging just on the edges of the comic book, which will certainly look a little bit odd. Because the comic book is still so far away from the edges, there is no danger of the hot glue damaging the the comic book you're not putting that thick of a layer of hot glue onto this this is just for preservation purposes when you are ready to remove the comic book all you have to do is use an exacto knife and cut through the hot glue use your exacto blade to then scrape off the excess hot glue i use a couple different angles just so that way i can remove any you know spillover okay so the experiment is done and i'm having some issues so first things first, one of the big things that I try kind of pointing out is that the thickness on this, it is not as thick as my original 11 by 17. It also means that then the hot glue doesn't have as much to cling on to. Instead, when I tried hot gluing it together, it actually had more gaps than this one did. So in the end, I actually needed to use two clamps on each side, hot glue kind of what little space I had then remove one clamp at a time and then continue on, which in my opinion is really obnoxious. It can be done, but I'm not really thrilled with it. Second thing is, is with this one, to me, at least visually, which I know some of you disagreed with, which is perfectly fine, it made sense to have it kind of floating in this free frame option where it's just a little bit higher, because in my eyes it makes it a little bit more unique as opposed to the CGC slab where it's a little bit lower down. So it kind of draws your eye just a little bit higher up and it gives it some really interesting visual interest. Problem is with this one, it's just, it looks wide and fatty as opposed to this one that looks like a traditional comic book shape. It just kind of emphasizes it and it appears to be even on all sides. This one clearly is not. So again, not really thrilled. Out of the two options here, I definitely prefer this size as opposed to this size. And I also do not like the thickness on this plastic. Now the Gator Guard option, this was definitely a clear winner between these two, 
hands down. I didn't have to do anything with the seams. It came together very easily. There's a couple few tips I gave you about the screws, but it's beautiful. And I love that the purple really brings out the Joker in the center. So that's just a nice little fun highlight. This, the silver does nothing for the comic. You, technically you can use acrylic paint. You can paint these, you can use spray paint. You could use all kinds of things to paint the screws to add that kind of extra feature. It's just, it's another step. Comparing these to a slab, I said they are design-wise very similar. So when you're kind of aesthetically looking at your shelf, it's very easy to kind of see these two side by side. Gator guards compared to these. Both of these are actually a little heavy, which is good. It, to me, at least, it shows quality and protection of my comic book, which definitely is a priority. However, again, these are going to display a little bit differently because, like I said, you've got the floating option. So let me show you these all lined up. I'm going to show you the kind of the full display. And you all tell me down in the comments which one is your favorite. I have to admit, when it comes to convenience, at least putting these together and switching these out, the Gator Guards are definitely a clear winner. For these, I can definitely switch them out. However, I have to cut out the hot glue, remove remove my screws, take everything out. It can be done. It's just not as simple as this. And especially with something like this, where I just need it preserved for now, and I will either replace this copy, because I'll admit it's not in the best condition, or at the very least, I'm going to clean it and get it pressed. I want to be able to take this out or just hand this to the presser and say, when you're done, put it back in there. The other thing that I know some of you are already mentioning is I used the, the black screws on this. I could have gone red. I didn't go red because if you've noticed, it's a much older Silver Age comic. If I had bright red compared to the Daredevil, it would make him look much more pink than he already is. There are some other options that I could do, but I also wanted to at least show you kind of the difference between a bolder color and something that's a little bit more muted because the focus is on the comic book similar to the silver screws. And the other thing that I will say is aligning these, even though, for instance, this comic book, you can tell it's not perfectly centered because the comic book itself is not perfectly centered. It's a little askew. So even with this one where it's just, it's a little off, I don't notice as badly as when you're putting it in a simple floating frame where if it's off, it's really obvious. For this, it was very simple to align it, get it centered, or at least as well centered as I possibly could, and then put on the screws. So that was another huge convenience. And I wanna give one final humongous thank you to Gator Guard. This was incredible. I can think of about 10 more comic books that I wanna put in here. And without the incredible support of Gator Guard, this video would not have been possible. Now this is of course our final combination, which shows you our two floating frame options, a CGC slab and our gator guards. So the big question for you all is, which one is your favorite? Have a great day, everyone.